Well, hi and welcome to the show. Now, in this one, what we're going to be talking about is how to spot the accumulation and find out what is in it. So stay with me and we'll get to that right away. Well, hi and welcome to the show. Now, like I said earlier, this one is about uh, accumulation. Now, I'm looking over here at my other screen because I decided to make this video to answer a question that came in from somebody who has taken my course. So I'm going to put that email up on the screen so you can have a quick look at that. OK, so here we are with the email. And he goes, I'm so sorry about the late reply. That doesn't really matter. We've all got uh, plenty of time. You can always come back to me anytime you know once you're on the course and I will answer any of your questions and help you through anything. So what he said he would appreciate some samples using candlestick charts or maybe even better spend some time. OK, so I'm fully aware of the process. Either way, your accumulation, manipulation, profit list or the Wyckoff, Wyckoff method that I'm using. OK, so I understand about Wyckoff and all that sort of stuff, but because I studied that many, many years ago. Um, but uh, I'm not really if that's changed at all, I'm not really into that. So I can't really help, help on that. My entries are good if I catch the direction. Uh, I'm trading springs and up thrusts. Well, springs and up thrusts, that's definitely, I remember that from a, a wake off or wake off, however you want to pronounce that. Um, I'd like to get away from that because really that's not something that, that I do. I can show you something a lot uh, easier to understand than that. But the bias of the accumulation, or as you call it, the content uh, which I should be attached to, is something I still don't see too well. I'm using higher time frames, support and resistance areas, supply and demand, swing analysis, etc. But still, I'm failing more than I'd like, identifying the objective of the accumulation. Uh, by the way, I also read How to Create the Life You Were Meant to Live, the book, and I'm working on the new approach. That book is great. The best I have ever read in that topic. OK, well, there's a good opportunity for a plug. OK, so if you haven't read this book yet, grab a copy of it. It's a fascinating book and it will really will make a difference to how your life goes forward from this reading. Anyway, OK, so let's just um, discuss why it is that people have a problem locating the accumulation. First, locating the accumulation and secondly, understanding what is in it. Because if we understood uh, what was in the accumulation, the accumulation area, if we understood, for example, that it was uh, an accumulation of buy orders, we would be guaranteed to take a winning trade almost because provided we didn't get stopped out on a retrace, we would simply go with the uh, once the market came out of that accumulation area, we'd simply go with the, the, the market and we would make money. And likewise, if we knew that the market makers were accumulating sell orders, we would make money. Now, I, as you know, as you know me, that I've been doing this many years, many, many years, uh, and I have always said that I still cannot ever work out the contents of the box of the accumulation area while it is going on. Never once said I could because I can't. Uh, if anybody tells you they can, um, put your hand on your wallet because you're about to lose some money because you can't do that. Well, I certainly can and I've been doing this 20 years. So how do you get to the bottom of this? How do you use that information to find out what is highly likely to be in the of the box. So let's get back over on the chart. I'm sorry if I'm just looking away a little bit at the moment, but I just need to look away so we can see. OK, so what I'm going to do here is actually get rid of me off that screen. You don't need to see uh, it's, uh, it's all me on there. Let's get rid of that. Oh, I can't for some reason. Yes, I can. There we go. OK, so what we're looking at here is when we're looking at Pat. Now I'm showing on Pat because that's all I have. I don't look at uh, candle charts for obvious reasons, but this is what I this is what I have. But I can show you the same principle on here. So in this particular case, what we can see is through here, we can now see that this was accumulation running through here. At the time, we get a good indication of it because we've got these yellow blocks. You see Pat's showing this. They're all sort of stacked up, lined across this uh, this price area. So we can see that pretty much the price is racking up down here. This is an accumulation area. So what we want to ask the, answer the question is, which what are they doing? Are they accumulating buy orders or sell orders? Now, one of the things that, that you you should do first off is also pay attention before you try to work this out is where is the underlying trend? Now, if we go up to here and uh, we click on this, we can see underlying trend since the 17th really is, is, is heading on down. So that's quite important. So we'll keep that. So I'm going to go back over onto there 
and I'm going to go back over and move a little bit to the left. Sorry for the delay, but I'm just going to use my keyboard, which is out of the way. So I got my underlying uh, trend is down. That's a, an area that I want to be thinking about when I'm looking for what might be contained within this next area of accumulation that will come along. So what I'm looking is I'm not going to trade anywhere through here. Once I see the market is going up through this accumulation area and now I see the market starts to break out to the upside. Now, of course, a lot of traders here at this point will uh, buy into the market as it breaks through these areas here. And they'll say, OK, well, the market's gone through this point here. The market's now, it's now going to go up and they'll buy into the here following the belief that this is a trend running up through here. I, on the other hand, I'm thinking about, hang on a minute, just, just hold on a second here, because the underlying trend since the 17th has been down here, October the 17th. So, you know, I haven't yet seen anything change against this. So that gives me a bias to the other side, to the, to the downside, the slight bias. So if that is going to happen, I'm going to say to myself, what am I likely to see? What am I going to see that will support that? What I'd like to see is a stop take. So when I see something like this, where the market runs up through here, comes on and then starts to come back down into there, I think, OK, so now this is looking like this area through here, which we can now clearly see was accumulation. I'm looking to see that this was a false move up. So now this tells me that this area here is highly likely to be an accumulation of sell orders. So it's at this point here that I'll be looking to enter the market short. And for this reason, uh, for this uh, purpose, I will then go to this tool here, which is the, the retrace tool that we have. And I will be simply looking for a retrace area in which I can get in. Now, I'm going to choose this because this is a, a difficult one here. And why I want to show this is because this is a tool we have in Pat, which is what we call the retrace tool. It enables to get into Pat, into the market with very, very low risk. Now, what we'll do is we'd simply follow the market down as it's coming down. Once we've confirmed that it's, it's a shorting sell that we want, we want to look for a selling opportunity with low risk. We would follow the market down, follow the market down here, and we'd see, OK, well, as the market then comes back up to the top of this, uh, the top bar, which is 30, sorry, the top line, which is in this case 3560, that is where we would want to put our sell order around here. We then put our stop order, and as the market then comes back down, we would then want to put our stop loss order above here. Now, in this particular case, you could have been stopped out because as you entered here, if you used a very tight stop, 10 pips or 12 pips, something like that, you could be stopped out before the market gets back into its full trajectory. If that happened, you would, I look at the market and I say, OK, well, you know, it has played out. This is now still confirmed that this was a stop take. This was sells. This market is likely to continue on down anyway. So I would get back into the market. But if this, what you do need to understand is that when you are placing stops, stops are generally placed around even numbers or people will choose like I want a 10 pip stop or a 12 pip stop or a 30 pip stop. And they have these arbitrary figures that they come up with. And where, what I'm saying is that you should always place your stops relative to price action. And I'm going to cover that in the next video. So I'll catch up with you very soon on that. I hope this video has helped and it's shown you that you don't you can never understand what is in the uh, the accumulation uh, area. It's the resulting action that comes out of that that tells you really what you want to be looking at and where you're you should be trading from. So I'll catch up with you very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll get notification when these videos go live.